Thanks for joining us on Kahari Free at Last on Bounce 23 TV. I'm Kahari Inahara. Is there a concerted effort to destroy black colleges and universities? In 2011, President Obama made student loans hard to get, causing 28,000 African-American students to drop out of black universities and black colleges. Joining me is TalkTainmentRadio.com host Irv Jallo, the Reverend John Coates, and Danella Martin Braddix. Um, John, Reverend, I mean, President Obama is said to be a friend of black people, a friend of black education. Yet this African-American president, now if George Bush had did, done this, all, everything would have been unleashed. <laughs> Yet he signs it making it harder for black students to get loans, 28,000. Black students drop out of black colleges. Oh, my God, what's going on here? Well, you know, the president has a friendly smile. He has a friendly dip in his walk. And he can sing, but his actions as it relates to black students and black America in general has not been friendly at all. Oh, that's the not first, true. The that's first, not the true. The first act, one of his first acts as president is, is that they threaten funding to black students. One of his first acts. He didn't wait. But as soon as they got into office, uh, black colleges were under the gun immediately. Why? Well, that's a good, that's an absolute good question. And maybe it was in his administration where they could get away with that and cutting funding to black colleges because with his black face and knowing that black Americans have already accepted the symbolism over his presidency versus the substance that black colleges would naturally be a but target. But black colleges are totally, um, I wouldn't say totally, but almost wholly dependent on federal dollars, federal dollars and some state dollars. Am I correct? You're absolutely, you're absolutely They don't have correct. those big endowments. You're absolutely Absolutely correct, and not only are, are, are black colleges de uh, dependent upon federal and state dollars, but we know that um, that 62 percent of the job market requires some college education. Yes. We know that, so mm -hmm. it, it has, this is going to have a devastating effect on our What country. is? What are the ramifications of this kind of thing, uh, Earth? I mean, we already know because of the credit score that he has put in place, the new policies that he's put in place, that you know we don't meet you know, a certain level. What do you level. mean credit score? Um, you know, he's using credit in order to, um, you know, determine if you are eligible for the student for federal aid. The president aid. is? Yeah, for federal oh. aid. And so, therefore, you know, I mean, come on. We already know that we don't make a lot of money. We don't make a lot of money compared to white households. Right. So, to have that, that endowment fund worth $117 million compared to $15 million for the HBCUs, that's a huge difference. It's huge. It's going to be devastating. So, Donella, what does that mean in terms of black college graduates? What do they have to look forward to at this point? Well, unfortunately, what that means is that there's going to be a lower uh, number of uh, college graduates, uh, particularly coming from black uh, institutions. And what it means is right now, we've got to make a call to action to bring attention to this situation because as Pastor Coates said, if by the year 2018, 62% of people who are going to be employed uh, and be able to be successful are gonna need college educations, we need to address this problem today. It's is there a conspiracy? I, I, I know I, I use the word concerted, but now I got to move to the big C word. Is there a conspiracy to destroy black colleges? I believe there has been a conspiracy to destroy black colleges. Why? As, there, as there's well, a conspiracy I mean, they're to destroy they're producing, black... They're producing people who are being educated. There, What's the there's problem? There's a conspiracy to destroy black people. Okay, oh. and, and, and in that, oh. and, in the, and I can point to everything from the abortion <laughs> rate, <laughs> that that's a conspiracy, a part of the conspiracy to destroy black people, to now talking about higher education and the effect that that will have, the devastating effect it will have on our community when, um, when these numbers are, 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 are reduced. But I, what I think the greater conspiracy is, is what is preventing the black colleges and university from protesting? Yeah. Moving to the streets. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get to that in a minute, but, <laughs> but Irv, if George Bush had have done this, if Mitt Romney had have done this, what would have been the response? It would have been everybody in the streets, and it would have been a big uproar. And I, I'm, I hate to have to admit this, but I really think that nobody's saying anything because they don't want to come out against President Obama. Uh, Wait Barack. a minute. You change rules at a devastating black colleges, devastating black university. 28, do you know how many students said that? That's a lot. That's a huge number that have dropped out. That's a lot. And yet silence? And not only is it a huge number that has dropped out, that is our our future brain trust. Whether it be judges. Our, our future, because mm -hmm. what happens, what, what a black student 
gets from a black college or university is nurture. Uh -huh. That's right. That's what right. a black student gains from a black college or university is, is pride or what have you. It's There's the same thing that an Irish student would get from an Irish exactly. university. What a, his, what a yep. Latino Hispanic student would get from an Hispanic. Yep. They get that cultural apparatus mm -hmm. necessary to spring forward. Without that, they don't go anywhere. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. Wow, my goodness. Obama says no to black colleges. Up next on Kahari, free at last. Welcome back to Kahari, free at last. Black colleges begged the president to restore the old rules, but to no avail. Is President Obama, let me repeat that, is President Obama leading the effort to eliminate black colleges, or is this just an unexpected consequence of budget cutting? Mm. Joining me is TalkTainmentRadio.com host, Earth Jallo, the Reverend John Coates, and Donella Martin Braddix. Uh, John, maybe the, maybe the president just, uh, it, maybe he didn't understand. Uh, he just came into office, it was an unexpected consequence of budget cutting. It had nothing to do with eliminating black colleges. Can we give him the benefit of the doubt? No. Why? Wow. <laughs> you, you know something. You, 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 I you, love you, the face he was making. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Give him the benefit of the doubt. He's not why, trying to do that. Why, why give him the benefit why of not? the doubt? Why not? He's in the fact, first black in president. In fact, the first people we, sh we shouldn't have given the benefit uh, of the doubt to is black leadership in this country that refused to present a hard agenda that w w which would have been inclusive of funding for black colleges to the president's administration. So we had no agreement on the front end before he was elected in office, but yet we willfully elected him to the presidency, and now we're bleeding as a result you of him becoming president. You tell me the black president. leadership rolled over. Is that what you said? Rolled over and did nothing? Yes, I believe it was a conscious decision to do so. Donella, why are black people so silent on this issue? Of course, there are other issues, but this one really destroys, as you said, the future of the race. Why are they so quiet? Well, why have we been so quiet about the changes to the Voting Rights Act? The question is, what we need to realize is, where does the true leadership come from? It doesn't come from legislation. It doesn't come from the government or the president. It comes from grassroots efforts, which, ha which happen in the home. And what black parents need to do is, when they have a child, they need to think about the fact that my child is going to need to be educated. They're going to need a college education. Mm -hmm. And what we're going to have to start doing is, we're going to have to start exploring how we're going to be able to afford a college education in these critical times. And we need to make our politicians and leaders responsible for enacting funding so that we can continue to be educated. The black press, Earth, the black press has been silent. I think we're probably the only ones that's covering this. Uh, the black press has been silent on this. Why? You know, I, I, like I said before, I believe that they don't want to come out against President Barack Obama because he looks like them. But something has to be done because the children, once again, are the ones who are going to be missing out. Um, you know, if you can't give reparations to everybody in monetary form across the board, at least give us some type of fund where if you decide that you want to go to college or do a trade, that you, the money is there so for you. So what you're telling me is our children have no future. Uh, is, is that what you're it's telling me? It's looking, is look, is looking like that, Kahari. I mean, what are they going to do? How what, are we going to afford Are they supposed to be on food stamps and food aid for the rest you, of their life? Go unemployed? Are, are they being set up to go to the underground economy where they wind up in the prison industrial state? Is this Re 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 prison? Rewind. I'm yeah. still trying to figure out <laughs> what black press are you talking about that's supposed to be covering? You talking about the disappearing newspapers? Are you speaking of the, uh, the disappearance of, of black radio stations? Are you talking about what those other two cable networks are covering or not covering as far as news <laughs> information? You know, what black media? So we have not even a media outlet in order to di di distribute um, purgative information. So what are you telling me? You're telling me that there is no hope here? or that the hope is somewhere else. I mean, well, what are you telling? I mean, man, this is crazy. I'm saying that how, I'll wait take... A minute, wait a minute. How can black people sit idly by, knowing that this is going on, and say nothing? We don't know that is going on. We do not know that is going on. Now, yes, we have read stories that the um, United Negro College Fund and the black college presidents have all been vocal with the president, but mainstream media won't cover it. And what remnants is left from black media is um, still that information is not saturating out throughout the community. That information, they've killed 
our information distrib distribution um, devices in order to distribute information for people to even have yeah, information that. to get upset about. And that might be true to a certain extent that we don't, we might not have that to cover. However, uh, we do know the 28,000 students that had to drop out, the parents of those students, they do know that this is going on, and those, if, if it's nothing more than the 28,000 that they take won't to say the nothing. street, but, but they should take it to the street. But students that's dispersed throughout America, right. but not guess necessarily what? in one, it in one community. It doesn't matter. Once you take, once one of them take that first step to start that protest, the rest will follow. But oh, we have to start wait, wait somewhere. Minute. Remember when we had the student sit-ins? Well, y'all were too I, young. No, I was sat-in at OSU. We did the student sit-ins. We did the, <laughs> I'll date myself. Take we did the student <laughs> sit-ins. We did the student protests. Mm -hmm. We did all of that. Where is that? Where is that? Where Fire. did it go? Well, well, that energy has been lost in this particular, you know, generation. I, I don't mean to call, you know, actually it was lost, I would say, the advent of the emergence of the hip-hop generation, mm. where suddenly there was style over substance, where suddenly symbolism became more more important than actual uh, literal gains. Mm -hmm. And so what you have is a sleepy society mm -hmm. that feels that they have made it. So mm -hmm. there's you don't have the energy of the 60s anymore. Well, 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 decimated yeah. and devastated. Well, you got, po you got a poet in you today, don't you? Because <laughs> <laughs> I said decimated and devastated. Say, you yeah, like that up. Other than making it. Yeah, but it works. That's right. Because yeah. something is going on here. I don't want to use the big G word. But I'm getting worried, aren't you? Oh, I'm certainly, I'm certainly concerned about it. And then you look at the dollars and cents that's involved. If there's over $400 million being taken away from black colleges and universities, okay, who's going to get that money? Right, well, right. the people that's going to get that money is your local community college because your kids that, 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 that are not going to black colleges, they may still desire to get an education. You're using the C word. So, so those, dollars, using the those, dollars, word. those dollars are going, are going to go at, uh, elsewhere. So you're telling me that the institution that produces like it has produced is being wiped out and those money and those students then will all of a sudden wind up at these other institutions, those that can get the money. That's right. It could be a money grab. Community right. college. It could be, it could be so a money grab. So it wipes out the black college. It could be a money so grab. So according to what you're saying, there is a conspiracy to well, wipe out black universities what, and colleges. What worries me is that not only do you see the, uh, the decimation of the traditional historical black college situation, you don't even see the traditional two-year college situation anymore. What's happening, particularly in urban areas, targeted towards minority, black and Latino, young people who are underemployed and undereducated, you have this 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 preparation of what do you call it? DeVry Institute, oh, the yeah. sort yeah. of schools yeah. they have. Trade schools. Trade, trade schools. trade schools. Trade schools, which capitalize on um, their ignorance because they get they have to get the student loans. Mm -hmm. It's a big money-making industry. And so they want these children, because they're children, mm -hmm. they're young, they wind up in a th several thousand dollars worth of debt. And they've got a nine and year, it, a nine month certificate, yeah, yeah, yeah. and they can't be they, employed. They can't, so they it's can't even worse of. than them going yeah. to a traditional right. two year college. Well, let me, well, how do we work ourselves out of this, or quickly? How do we get out of this? We have to help ourselves. We can no longer depend on the people that we elect. We can no longer say that we need. Black leadership has Black failed us. Black leadership has definitely failed us. Ooh, yes, it has. Wow. Yes, it has. That's a stirring indictment. You yes, mean to tell has. me there's no hope in Black leadership? When I look anymore? at when I when I look at local and I look at national, the black I leadership. Tell you what. Yeah, it's oh goodness. On Death Watch, up next on Kahari, free at last. Welcome back to Kahari Free at Last. Black colleges which produce 50% of black teachers and lawyers, 80% of black judges are losing $200 million a year under Obama, bringing them to the brink of extinction. Joining me is TalkTainmentRadio.com host Irv Jallo, the Reverend John Coates, and Danella Martin Braddocks. Uh, $200 million a year out of cashed, starved, Black universities that are barely making it, and that number is going to grow and grow as more students. There is, a, they're on the brink of extinction already. Oh, most, most certainly, and, and you'll see the colleges close one by one by one. They will shut down, and there'll be no, no news about it. Where's None. black leadership on this? Irv said black leadership has failed us. 
Where are our black leaders speaking out? All these, well, we've seen some of them go to jail, but where are, the, where are they speaking out on this, John? Well, some have complained about it, but again, they're not getting the media coverage. It's the, the Cornell West and the Tavis yes. Malleys, they speak out yes. against it, and then they're instantly demonized yeah. right. as a result of their opposition to the black president. That always comes up is that when we oppose a position of the Obama admi administration, someone then accuses us of not supporting... Of being Uncle Tom. Uh, yeah. Not supporting the black yeah. president. But in fact, isn't that what's happening now, Sharpton now? Yeah. Aren't those black pastors organizing and, and seem like they're teaming against as, him as in Brooklyn? Docile, as docile as our society has become, there is a spark of life that's that's happening throughout America and, and the holy war that's going on in Brooklyn where Brooklyn pastors, are, or in Harlem rather, that where, where, where New York pastors are now rising up and saying, we are the community leadership and why should we give all of this authority to um, Reverend Al? Or I heard someone call him once. Well, according to the article, <laughs> he's, 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 he's a oh, big firm. <laughs> Big perm. Big perm. <laughs> I didn't say that. Now, but somebody <laughs> I heard did call me. Yeah, I heard that too. But they say he's jet setting around the country. He's making Lucci. Got a, well, got, a, got a young girl that he's going to marry now. Beautiful. But anyway, she's, I mean, she's beautiful. Way, too. She's beautiful too. And, he's but, uh, and he dresses well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Somewhat like yourself. No, you know? don't, don't <laughs> start. Don't start, Mr. Three Piece. But at any rate, what you're telling me is that our black leadership at this point is null and void, period. Is, is null and void, but we're... Okay, we, who do we look we, to then? We look to ourselves. We look to ourselves. <laughs> Leadership's organic. From the, the, If we recognize that this is the issue, right. this is the problem, then we need to right. raise it. We need to organize. We need to... Um, what happens when we are not educating our children, Irv? then the cycle of slavery is going to repeat. History repeats itself. Um, then you have the privatization of the prison system. So therefore, they need, they need to fill those beds. If you are undereducated, then you're going to most likely wind up doing a life of crime. And because, remember, they already yeah, did know, the third grade study. Exactly. They already, they already did the, yeah, third, exactly. the third grade study. The third that grade if, syndrome. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That if you don't make it yep. by that by point, by the third that grade, we, we, gonna, right we, we have a bed for, for you. For people who don't mm -hmm. know, what was the primary findings of the third grade study? The primary findings was is that if you were not successful by the time you had hit third grade, mm -hmm. didn't hit mid certain benchmarks, mm -hmm. is that uh, we have a bed for you, yeah. a cell for you that Especially is reserved. Especially the young right. black so male children. So by the third children. grade, young black male children are already feeding the prison industrial yep. Oh, school. certainly. Well, well, even and earlier, yes. even there's been studies that have shown that by first grade, if, if black boys are not competent in reading by, first, by the end of first grade, that that is a solid predictor yep. of whether they will become inmates at a later date. Wow. Right, Dr. Yeah. Joanza Kanjufu and, and Dr. Janice Hell Benson told us that nearly 30 yeah, years ago. Yeah, 30 years ago. And Michelle Alexander yes. just told yep. us that with in the, her new book. Yeah, with the new Jim Crow. So with all of this mounting up, high unemployment rate, 101 million folk on food stamps and food aid, 150 million people on poverty in this country, and, and the conditions are getting worse, and now the sequesters are just getting ready to say, it means we're going to have austerity, we're getting ready to have cuts to the WIC program, cuts all over the place. What in the world are we getting out of this presidency? Mm -hmm. uh, not much, not much, and then you, we're going to have massive layoffs and still within the um, the workforce. Look at the, the because the, of the Obamacare, because we're not sure how that's going to play out. Not just because Obamacare, we haven't seen the other um, shoe drop, drop yet. On, an, an, on the financial collapse yet. You know, look at the deal that J.P. Morgan Morgan, yeah. Morgan, um, um, Morgan Chase, Chase has just has just recently cut. I mean. It's, it's and they're also setting limits on how much you can withdraw oh, from yeah. your bank account each quarter. Yeah. I mean, think about <laughs> so this. You That's so crazy. You better think about that, yes. We are entering into an Orwellian age, what George Orwell wrote about Animal Farm in 1984 with him, but we're seeing it come into fruition. But this is not eyes. what we elected Obama, President Obama, to do, Donella. We elected, he said, change. We thought change would move us in a more constructive direction. We're going backwards. Fast. Oh, let's be clear, the true leadership in the black community does not come from President Obama. He is a symbol. I believe, and we talk about the lack of black leadership, there are no black leaders. That is a thing of the past. The closest thing we have to black leaders today are the prosperity consciousness preachers, the oh, super preachers. Oh, oh, oh. This is who the black middle class is listening to. This is who the lower class aspires to be. And they are the ones that are influencing the minds of most black people today. Let's keep it real. they have that kind of power at this point, Reverend? Unfortunately, that's uh, that's so. The prosperity preacher. The church, the church, the church, the church, the church, the church has left a philosophy of personal salvation 
to teach personal prosperity. Yes. So there's not even righteousness be even being taught within our community now. I don't want to call it pimps in no, the pulpit. Well, I don't want to call it that. Let's not do that. Let's not do that. But okay, however, so. when we talk about black families, where black families' money is going to mm -hmm. in terms of a community effort, it's going to the churches. But, it's not going to the, 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 the grassroots groups to bring awareness to the and what activities are the churches that affect back, our lives. Like, what are the churches giving back? Earth? I've been complaining about this for years. Churches, we, need, we don't need to ask nobody for anything. We have the resources. But they're not addressing issues like this, the black but colleges. But they, they need to stop which, separating. Which historically, they've always stop been. Stop separating always. The black themselves church, from, the, from the regular black The black, black people. church has been the feeder program into black colleges Absolutely. and universities. But, and we're going to see another another powerful institution in our community suffer as a result of this. Black colleges and universities are the feeder systems into black sororities and fraternities. Oh, so the divine nine, if you will, it is going to take a major hit on this. Ooh. You know, it, it... Go down <laughs> fighting or shut up and sell out. Up next on Kahari, <laughs> free at last. Welcome back to Kahari Free at Last on Bounce 23 TV. Should black colleges and universities sue President Obama to stop their demise? Will they go down fighting or shut up and sell out? Joining me is TalkTainmentRadio.com host, Irv Jallo, the Reverend John Coates, and Danella Martin Braddox. Should they sue President Obama and the federal government to stop this bleeding? Should black colleges do this, Reverend Coates? Well, maybe they should, but the 2014 congressional elections are coming up. So maybe so? they put, well, put pressure on your... On, look, Congress and the Senate is the, is the counterpoint to the presidency. So, um, you know, I, I, I don't think we could necessarily trust the courts because it was, it was the courts that struck down the, <laughs> the Voting right. Rights Act. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's the courts that approved Obamacare. So, so I don't we know. need mass action. We need, exactly. we need these black colleges and black colleges to take to the streets and, and the protest. Students, Is yep. that what you're saying? Yes, it was. Parents, everybody. You're talking about everybody's got everybody. to protest. But nobody's going to protest this president. Black people aren't going to do that. I mean, they're rolling over and, and letting all kind of stuff happen. We already seen what's happening. Nobody will stand up. Nobody. Well, we can't go back and blame who we gonna blame later after this is over with and, and somebody else new is in office. But why aren't community activists like you leading the charge, Irv well, well, I'm on here talking about it. I'm no, spreading no, 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 the news. No, 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 How come you're not in the street? Well, I guess you got a good question, but I'm not in the universe. I'm not in the colleges and universities. That's right. right I now. keep forgetting you didn't graduate from a black school. Thank you. I'm the only one that's a black because, university because graduate. Somebody, uh -huh. Because somebody, the reason why she doesn't organize and others don't organize is because um, community organizers have been sent in our community and they have said, look, we're here to organize you. And that's what's happened through organizations like, like, um, like Bread or what have you. They, they bring org organizers in to organize the community and guess what? They really so help black set the colleges, So black colleges are not going to sue, Donella. Is, is that what's going to, are they going to roll over and take this? I don't know. I would encourage black colleges to sue simply because we need the press. We need to let people be aware of what is happening because it's very scary. Um, this institution of historically black colleges is dying. Dying. Yes, and dying. so anything that's going to give publicity, publicity to that is a good thing. But you know, diversity says you don't need black colleges anymore. That they are relic, that they are archaic, that so let them die. Everybody can go to the big universities now. Everybody's they welcome. White we don't colleges. need them. You but don't we, need them anymore, right? We already we know that the graduation rates for uh, for people coming from historically black colleges are higher. We already know that self-esteem, uh, career attainment, uh, success and wealth is oh, higher in uh, coming, you know, students coming from historically black colleges. So that's not an issue. Well, why not let them die, Reverend? Well, we can't let them die because of what they have meant so what to, do our we do? to our community. So my, what do my, we do? My, my mother is a PhD physicist that graduated from a black college. I graduated from a and, black college. Uh, you know, what do we do, Reverend? Well, we raise consciousness. We like need what? to let the people know. Spread it, take, take it to the streets. Let the people know about it and instruct the people what on how to What is it that we want people to know? We want people to know what's actually what's going on. The Which is? Even, is that funding's being cut from black colleges. The people don't know it. The people don't know that this is happening. That black colleges are now on life support. Exactly. Yes. And, 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 and they're watch. on the brink of <laughs> distinction, uh, extinction, death watch, 
and nobody seems to care. And anybody can speak out about this, not just myself. Anybody, if you're in college, if you're a, a college professor, an administrator, whatever, you can start a protest. I mean, I, I can't fight everything. So, in <laughs> essence, somebody's got to stand up. Somebody exactly. has to stand Everyone up. Everyone has Everyone to stand up. Everyone should stand up. Everyone. Well, education has always been the number one thing in the African American That's community. That's right. We voted for every levy. We ain't gonna vote for this. But we <laughs> voted for every levy and everything else. Am I right. correct? That's correct. That's correct. And as a result, now education doesn't mean anything to us. We throw it all away because of a black president? That's crazy. Yeah, it's not, it's not that education doesn't mean anything. Well, why are the we message, standing up? The message is that black controlled and owned and interest uh -huh. education uh -huh. isn't important anymore because we have we have, we have we are, we are li we're living in a post-racial uh, state. So well, maybe we can go and get Thanks some to TalkTainmentRadio.com host Earth Jallo, the Reverend John Coates, and Donella Martin Braddocks. And thank you for joining us for Kahari. Free at last.